Okay, thank you very much. Um, <coughs> yes, uh, so today we are going to talk about uh, Java container, that's the name of the topic. And uh, the truth is that uh, there is uh, lots of uh, uh, you know, best practices on the market and I try to grab them all and put all of them on uh, one single presentation. So let's go. I've got plenty of um, plenty of uh, uh, you know slides and and materials so let's go um, about me i'm uh, i work at nokia i uh, have got lots of experience in java some uh, with go and i'm one of the organizer of uh, go Vrots, which is a meetup um, and focus on go uh, in wrocław uh, of course you can find uh, me on my personal web page github twitter linkedin and so on but it's not very interesting so let's go to the agenda. So today we are, uh, I've split the whole presentations into 10, uh, 10 parts. So at the very beginning, we are going to talk about the uh, applications. So we need to counterize something. So let's build some small applications in Java. And then step by step, we are going to talk about the best practices all around. Okay, so signaling, uh, then uh, choosing best container, how to split our jar into layers and multi-stage builds, uh, Java ergonomics, security, what's Google Jeep, if you haven't heard, and some extras and, of course, summary. So um, there is uh, lots of uh, technical details on my presentations and Docker files and all that stuff. So if you would like to make a photo of any of slides, you can make a photo of this one uh, because everything is there. So the whole, uh, all the code snippets, presentations, even images, everything is there. It's already there. Uh, so I've committed everything and you can find their PPTX presentations as well as uh, the codes. Okay, a few more seconds. Okay, so let's go. Uh, so the very first thing, the first step is that we need to counterize something, as I said. So let's do that. Let's build applications. It might, for example, serve users. Uh, so it's going to be user service. It will have uh, uh, some REST API, and it's going to be uh, connected with the storage, MySQL. Yeah? So really simple one. REST API over the users, like a crude one. Yeah. So create. Uh, get, update, so on. Really easy one. So here is here we've got the user, yeah? So as simple user as possible, uh, only four fields, ID, first name, second name, and uh, birth date, okay? And that's it. Uh, of course, getters, of course, it's, it's it came from uh, tables, users. It's entity, uh, probably you've seen tons of such classes. Really easy one. And then there's controller. It's the rest one. So we've got um, a prefix API, and then we've got, uh, of course, we're injecting uh, the user repository, and then we've got them all the methods. Uh, I haven't listed all of them, but there is also like two or three of them, yeah, like update. So here we've got uh, get all, get particular, and updates. Uh, no, create, sorry. And let's run it, okay? So let's uh, run our applications, check whether it's working, and then we'll go to the dockerizing, okay? So, do, 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 do. okay, so we're here. We can um, check what's there. So here, this is a, there is a POM, there is a SRC and uh, all that stuff, it's not the magic. I can show you that uh, this is SRC and this is a user's app where we are running it. So no magic, I'm not going to cheat you. So let's build it, yeah? So let's type maven clean install. Wait five seconds. Okay, and we've got uh, super Uber fat jar, and then let's let's run it. Okay, the down Spring. It's a Spring Boot applications with a Tomcat. Nothing fancy. Blah blah blah. Okay, it should be there. Let's refresh that. We can see that it's working. We've got three users. Let's try to get one. Okay, it's working. Two. 
is working. Okay, so let's get back to the presentation. So now we've got applications. Now we have something which we can dockerize, okay? So what's the first thing which usually we do when we need to dockerize something? So we Google it. So we Google, okay, so let's think about the distro. What's the most popular Linux distro? Ubuntu. So let's choose one, okay? So we type docker image Ubuntu with Java, yeah? Because we've got a Java. So let's see what's that. The first, it's a really, uh, really user story. So like it's the first thing is this parrot stream one. So I've entered that. Okay, looks okay. There is some readme file, blah, blah, blah. Choose one, and then I've created a Docker file, okay? So the very first Docker file uh, which I've created was just from this particular repository, so parallel stream Ubuntu Java, and then I've created a directory. So I run the second line, run uh, created a directory users app, and put the fat jar there, and also run a sage which run sh is just as simple as that. It's just, uh, you know, echo running users app, and then we run Java jar and our Uber jar. That's it. Really easy, okay? And there is entry point, which is the start of our Docker, and it just runs the uh, run sh, okay? As easy as that. So let's do that, okay? So yeah. So let's run it. So let's stop it, uh, build it. So now we are building uh, Docker with uh, Docker build. So we are building that, we are tagging that with the users app version one. Sorry, m make it bigger. So, yeah. Okay. Could be that, that. Okay. Okay, so it's gonna be a bit small, like half of the screen, but um, let's do that. So now we are ru running Docker build. Uh, we are tagging this Docker build and we are passing the Docker file, which is uh, v1. So this is the very first version of our Docker file, okay? Let's build it. Okay, blah, blah, blah. It's creating directory, copying files, copy, uh, blah, and setting the entry points, and that's it. So let's run it. Uh, the any extra magic which I'm doing here is linking, yeah, because I've got uh, Docker in the another, uh, like MySQL Docker in the another uh, image, so I need to link those containers to have access, okay? That's all magic, and the rest is pretty regular one, yeah? So I'm passing the port to expose our um, our, uh, uh, you know, the REST API, yeah? So let's run it. Uh, those are some extra things which I'm printing from the uh, JVM. And now we are running it, ta -ta -ta -ta. okay, started in 12 seconds. So let's check whether it's working or not. Okay, it's working. And now, the very first problem which we might encounter here and which is a really bad practice is here. Now I type control C and nothing is happening. I can type control C again and nothing is happening. And as you can see, the Docker gets the signal to terminate our Docker, but it's not passed to our Java applications itself, okay? So it's the problem. And this is one of the um, best, no, not best practice, but this is one of the uh, bad things which you can do when you're creating your own Docker files. So how to solve that? For now, we need to stop it. So we can make it bigger. Um, sorry. So let's check what's there. We've got two containers. Let's stop the one, okay? so. When we stop it from here by Docker, now it's a bit more tricky because what Docker does is that now it sends the seek term to our container and waits 10 seconds. But after 10 seconds, it's, there is a no more patient and there is seek kill, okay? So now the application container is just killed. It's like kill minus nine. 
and our application stopped, okay? But it was not graceful. So usually if you've got the Spring applications, you got a seek term, then the whole graceful thing is starting and then you wouldn't um, break the, the any connections. So by default it's implemented. So when you have some ongoing HTTP connections, it's waiting until it's going to be drained and then it stops the execution. And this is a very good thing, this graceful one, this graceful shutdown, it's cool. And uh, But we need to do some good things or a good practice inside the Docker file to make it happen. So what's that? Let's get back to the presentation. And there are two ways how we can might run, uh, write the entry points, yeah? The first one is just as a string. And the second one is just an array, like in JSON. And the very first one is really bad one because every single time when Docker notice something like that, he runs it in a new shell. And by that, the, your signals are not passed. So Docker sends the seek term, seek, but it won't just get the signal, your Java application. So it's very bad one, the first one. You need to use these uh, brackets, okay? Critical thing if you would like to uh, catch the signals. The second part is if you run a script, as I did, the run sh, then also you can't um, start your application as at the very bottom, sorry if it's not noticeable, but it's uh, like uh, slash uh, java uh, minus jar blah blah blah. So it won't work as well because it's going to create a subshell and then also your uh, signals won't be passed, okay? So use this exec form and this is also very important if you wrap your Java uh, or any other execution uh, of your application uh, with uh, some shell script, then you use, please use exec, otherwise it won't work. Okay, to sum it up, the, the signaling part, uh, use uh, exec JSON one, then uh, of course if you use the shell scripts, use exec. And uh, don't use pipe if you run applications, so don't use a pipe something and then something then something. Please don't use, don't use that. And avoid pint what? P avoid, avoid being pid one. It's also the problem, but it's uh, but in uh, nowadays Docker is not that problem like it was, but in the previous editions there was a problem that if you are PID1, then you need to uh, make some extra logic to make it smooth. So there was a project called Tiny, which was a wrapper around your, uh, you know, for example, Java applications, but it's not uh, valid anymore, so it's not that very important. And of course, listen the seek term signal, okay? So seek term is this one which Docker sends you when he's going to cancel your uh, your workload, yeah? So first the seek term, if you want uh, finish your uh, graceful period in some period like 10 seconds, then he's going to send you kill. Okay, and you can override this signal. So you can tell the docker, okay, I'm going to please uh, inform me when something went wrong with other signal, not seek term for example, but seek, uh, I don't know, seek int or something. Yeah, so you can change the signal which is going to be used by Docker. Okay, so the final version of our Docker file would be like that. Yeah, so we've got uh, Java, we pass extra flux uh, native memory tracking, which is just printing some summary of our, um, of our uh, in fact, uh, parameters which we've set uh, during the, the starting phase. And then we are passing the jar and that's it, okay? But everything is in array. It's really important, remember that. Okay, um, but when we were doing this uh, whole stuff and we were when we were downloading this magic, uh, you know, image which we Google in the internet, I noticed one thing. And this thing is that a single layer inside this Docker image was like almost 400 megs. So it was a lot. So I was wondering why is that, and then I type another thing. So I, I don't know if it's noticeable, but it's Docker image ls, which is also prints the size of the image. Yeah, and then I grab it uh, with the proper version which I've used, and then it saw that it was 881 max. So if you choose random image from the internet, you might finish with a Docker image which is almost a gig in size, okay? So it's a lot. 
So we need to have uh, some other small to smart way to choose proper uh, proper image for your workload applications in Java. Okay, so let's uh, let's try to analyze what options do we have. Okay, the first problem is what would be the our Java runtime, and this is uh, pretty critical. Uh, I guess today is also a talk about the licensing in Java. Probably it's really connected with that. Yeah, it depends on whether we would like to pay or not uh, to Oracle and whether we uh, it's okay for us to run open uh, uh, JDK or JRE. But we've got a couple of options, yeah? So there's Oracle, there's OpenJDK, there's OpenJDK by Adapt and Linux, uh, and like Red Hat has also something. Azul has something, Amazon, SAP, Liberica, all the companies have some uh, others, other Java runtime, yeah? So sometimes you use this one and sometimes the other one. So first of all, and the first questions when you are, you know, getting the, the proper image for your Docker is to choose proper um, uh, Java runtime, yeah? And the second question is what would be the base Linux image, yeah? So whether it's going to um, be, for example, Alpine, Alpine or something else. Yeah, but it's also really, it's connected with the Java runtime because Java runtime, uh, sometimes it might or it might not be run on particular distro because of some other problems, but I will tell you about the, at least about the Alpine um, case, okay? So sometimes we rely on some tooling which is, uh, you know, prepared by the, by the Linux, yeah? So like, Carl, wget, so we need to have something, um, something proper, yeah. So we need to have this tooling. So we choose, for example, Ubuntu because we're using a lot of, I don't know, something which is connected with Ubuntu yeah? and other stuff. So we need to also be aware. And uh, sometimes we don't really care about the size. I mean, it's not a problem that this particular uh, Java applications is like 400 megs with um, a Linux image plus jar. Uh, and there is also the security, and this is important. And uh, the general approach is that the less uh, external applications, tools, and other stuff is in s inside our Docker image, the better. Okay, so every single tool has some some you know security holes, and the less tools, the less security holes. It's all as always. So now there is a whole approach of doing the, the, the smallest distros as possible just for containers and also because of the security, okay? This is comparison between, uh, this is a really small at the, at the, at the very uh, bottom, so it's gonna be hard for you probably to read it, but all in all, this is a um, diagram which shows how big are um, Docker image with a proper Java, yeah? For example, the smallest one is OpenJDK with um, with JRE, and it's for Java 8, yeah? And this is only uh, 85 megs. And uh, for example, if we've got some stretch or a slim, and it's Java 11, because Java 11 is usually in a Docker world is much, much bigger. Uh, it's around like 100 megs. So it's like more than 400, yeah? So usually the the, the 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 truth is that Java 11 is big, 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 big. Why is that? I will tell you um, at the Alpine example. So the smallest one was Alpine, so let's choose Alpine, yeah? So the application was written in Java 8, so it's fine for us, so let's use Alpine uh, with uh, Java 8, uh, JRE. So uh, it's lightweight, uh, really, really lightweight. It's like 10 max or something, the whole, the only Alpine, but it has not glibc, okay? It has only libc. And JVM um, also um, uses this uh, glibc. And in case of Java 8, it's not a problem. Uh, so this libc, and let's let's back to the libc. So libc is, uh, the muscle is a libc, but it's not glibc. It's uh, lightweight, fast, small, and JVM uses that. Especially JVM, like JDK8, is based on that without any problems, but there are those problems in the JDK9, okay? So it's, uh, as I said, fast, it's standard interface, 
And now we will we'll go to the Project Partola. So what's Project Partola? Project Partola is a, a, a project which tries to port the newest Java to Alpine. So as you can see on the image, there is a no Alpine with Java 9, 10, 11, and so. Why is that? Because um, all those uh, uh, versions of JDK are heavily depends on the GDPC and people from uh, from the Open JDK they are uh, they still are working on moving that to this libc which is Muscle. Okay, so there is a project Partola. So they are trying to move it. And they are working really hard to do that. And with Java 13, there is a they are, they are almost there, so again, there will be small distro Java Alpine with uh, JRE 13, uh, but uh, the version is still not GA, okay? So it's not general availability. Availability, it's still like uh, in, uh, in uh, almost there, yeah? So I checked, I guess, a few weeks ago, it still was, was not still there, but almost, almost, yeah? So in uh, probably in a couple of weeks, We'll have the Java 13 with Alpine, with JRE, JDK, and it's going to be small because it's going to be based on the um, on the Musk, which is the GDPC implementation in Alpine. Yeah, yeah. So this is what I've uh, told you in a moment. Yeah. So we are waiting. It's going to be the distros with the, our uh, Java workloads would be really smaller then okay uh, so let's change our docker file to the java uh, to the image with uh, java uh, 8 jre from the alpine okay so if we'll move it so we are changing only the first line so the previously was like paro to ubuntu something something now it's open jdk 8 and let's move it so now we've built it we run it we check the size and now we see that our Spring Boot applications is 124 max, and it was 881, yeah? Just, and the application works exactly the same. Nothing uh, has changed there, okay? So it's, you know, critical, a really nice thing. So other options, how to make our image smaller. So we might use Java Modularity, which is just tailors our JRE uh, to just the models which are really used by our application. Uh, we can make, of course, code refactoring and make it, make it smaller, and uh, we, we might also remove some dependencies if, we are, if they are not uh, needed, yeah, of course. And from the Docker perspective, not Java perspective, we can still have some um, nice things like, like Docker Squash, which is squashing multiple layers into one, or uh, we can use also some Docker Ignore, but it's, it will you know, make your builds faster. Um, but if it's about the image size, also there are some Docker linters which might run over your Docker file and check whether there are some improvements which you can do uh, or not. So this is like a static analysis of your um, of your Docker files. Yeah. So now let's change. Let's assume that we are changing some business logic. So we've got our applications. Someone came and said, "Okay, add sort to our REST API." We are doing that. Now we are building it and then we are pushing the changes, okay? So docker push. And now we notice that every single time if we change single file in our application, the Java applications, we need to push 40 max and the whole fat jar, yeah? Because the whole fat jar uh, takes almost 40 max. So every single time we need to push to, reposit to registry, the docker registry, 40, like artifactory or something, 40 max. And it's, to be honest, it's it shouldn't be like that, yeah. It's it's like I don't know why why changing one line finished like or, or ends with 40 max. I guess we can do that better. So there is a the whole approach which is called um, unpacking of jar, and now we might try to um, because jar itself is like layered, and yeah? there are some layers in jar. So now we can create uh, uh, our jar as always, so maven clean package or install or whatever, and then we've got this fat jar, which is almost 40 max. And now at the very bottom, we've got the two lines. 
And the first one, just creating the directory, is nothing, nothing fancy. But the second line is doing unpacking the jar. So if it's unpacked, then we've got a different uh, directory structure. And this directory structure is that in this dependency, we've got uh, bootinf, metainf, and there are some external, internal um, dependencies. Yeah? So our code is in bootinf classes, but all the external things are bootinf libs. And if we'll change the Docker file into something like that, now we are making all the layers and we are, we are starting at the very top with the things which are changing the uh, not very frequently, yeah? because are they, are, they are external dependencies. So Docker, when we are building Docker file, at the first line, he will notice that every single time all our dependencies, like Spring Boot or, I don't know, or whatever, Guava or something, are not changing very frequently. So he's going to cache it and all our um, differences between the Docker builds and the finished images would be only on the third layer, so the classes. And then the difference would be like in kilobytes instead of 40 max. So it's, it's like really, really nice. And the things how is every, every, like all that things is going to be run is like by a minus CP. So instead of Java jar, we are um, we are uh, running it as a Java minus CP, and then we are passing all those things. So the classes and the, um, and the external um, dependencies which are in this lib directory. So if we'll do that, then the difference between our uh, no, Docker builds is going to be like kilobytes. Extremely useful when you're doing lots of, uh, for example, in CI, you've got lots of commits and someone in the Docker registry is, is complaining that you're, you know, creating lots of, you know, garbage in your uh, Docker registry because you're, you know, r running it uh, very often, yeah? So what are the pros? Really fast Docker builds because now we don't, we, we are, you know, it, it's much faster. So we are not need to send the whole jar, but only the classes and so on. So it's faster. And uh, when we are pushing something, it's really nice because we are reserve lots of bandwidth on the network. And uh, it's, of course, uh, the space is less occupied on our registry. So really nice things. Okay, but there is still another problem. So another problem is that if we are doing that, um, every single time we need to send to the Docker like 80 max. Now 80 max because we had a fat jar in the target and we unpacked the fat jar. So now we've got the uh, two things and both are around 40 max. So it's all on all 80 max and we need to send it to the Docker, even locally, I mean to the Docker daemon. And then it's, um, it's building that and sending there, okay? So it's also the problem that we might do better things, okay? So 80 max, and we need to every single time build this Java application on our own machine. I guess we can do that better. So with help, there is something which is called multi-stage. So in a single Docker file, we might have uh, two sections. The, the, the bottom one, which is called run, as you can see on the right, there is a, uh, exactly the same docker file as you've seen previously okay so nothing there's at least yeah there is no changes and at the very top you've got a phase which is builds our application so we need to send there only source code uh, maven wrapper and uh, the pom file so only three things so we don't need to set the whole jar as a um, you know all the all the stuff which are um, which is already packed inside the file, which is huge. But you need to send only the files like the source code, and then build everything inside the Docker daemon. And then the magic here is that when you are copying files, here you've got a from build. Yeah. So here you are calling the first phase as a build. So it's called build, and when you would like to copy the final jars or the final, um, you know, the, the the leaps and the classes and so on from the build, you need to say minus minus from build, and that's it. 
Okay? So we're also for unpacking jars, so we don't need to send all the dependencies in a jar, but only the source code and the POM, and that's it. Okay, every depths are cached by Docker, so the first uh, execution is you know pretty long, but the rest is really nice. Okay, and the uh, builds are reproducible, and uh, they are not depends on your VMs. Yeah, so you can it's easier to port your um, you know the whole execution, for example, in your the CI, um, and it's it's much much nicer. Okay, so now let's talk about Java ergonomics. So. So what's that? Um, so JVM has plenty of um, things which are doing under the hood to make uh, uh, somehow um, fees or um, adapt to the VM where it's run. Okay, so there is a memory, CPU, and this is trying to be as fast as possible, and that's one of the really killer features of the whole Java. Uh, the JVM that is going to make also the JIT optimizations and is going to adapt to the VM where it's run, okay? And uh, that's the Java ergonomics. And in the context of containers, there was uh, a huge technical debt, I would say, but the rest of the world, of programming world, was, um, I guess, uh, somewhere in the, in the, I don't know, few hundreds meter ahead uh, when it comes to c comparing to the Java, uh, but Java made a great um, great progress uh, lately, and now um, Java is ready to be run in the container. But previously it was not like that because Java was um, trying to get and make the whole ergonomic things based on some values which were taken from the VM itself and not from the C groups, which is a kind of limitations when the Docker is run, okay? so. We've got, for example, friends, which are also uh, showing us what uh, what are the calculated values uh, by the JVM itself, which were, for example, calculated the number of CPUs which are going to be run and so on. So all those flags, if you set them at the very beginning of your applications, there, there's going to be run every every like all the details what the uh, proper um, JVM options were set and uh, it's it's changing uh, when we um, when we see it uh, for example in the history of Java at the very beginning so before the Java 8 uh, version 1 to 1 it was like ancient times yeah so everything was broken i mean all the values which were calculated by the jvm was were you know bad and but there is a hope so if you really need to run that old um, java app and java uh, jre or jdk inside your container there is a uh, cool stuff which is written by the fabricate so they've created you know huge um, uh, script like the bash script, which uh, calculates properly all the uh, all the things. Yeah, so all the CPU, all the uh, memory calculations are set uh, by the script, and they are done very well. So if you uh, need to really run that old version, then you've got a, a hope for you, and there is a hope for you. So use this uh, ja run Java SH script as a wrapper for your application. Okay, then there were the changes in Java 8 and in the version um, Java 8, which were newer than 1 to 1. So they've uh, um, added some extra features like uh, parallel GC trees, compiler count, so all that stuff were not set on the VM CPUs but on the container one. And also the memory one uh, also was uh, was improved, okay? Uh, so it's going to be like a s small history of changes. Then we had a, like almost 90th century, but it was still not the best, so like in PRL. And uh, here was more and more container, uh, container awareness, so they've uh, set and they are now introduced the whole percentage things, so now you can set that um, uh, Java should 
takes only 75% of, of the memory. Yeah? So previously it was not like that, but they've introduced that in Java 10, in uh, Java 8 more newer than 191, and uh, also uh, in when in context of the CPUs, there was uh, use container support um, for the old, so all the flags were already deprecated, so you need to set it to use the old one, but otherwise uh, there were, um, like they've changing a lot, yeah, in those versions. And uh, also the, the Linux became to be relative to, to pdroot and the namespace, yeah. So also the tooling now understands the uh, C groups and the limits because previously it was not like that. And in Java 11 plus, um, now it's really cool, uh, I would say. So they also remove some old things. They've uh, fixed the JCM JPS. They are uh, also container metrics when you set this X show setting system. And uh, the CPU algorithm now it's it's really nice and understands also not the, the limits, the quotas and so on. So it's it's really nice. So. I would like to just to sum it up because there's uh, lots of um, small quirks in all the flags and all the changes. So, but if you really um, can't change the Java version, use this fabric script. Uh, if you can start with Java 11 and then you're free of, of those old those problems. If not, if you're still on Java 8, use this Java 9 version newer than 191. Okay, and that's my advice. If you do so, then you're, you're going to be safe. Okay, let's go to the security. So now security in, in containers is really important, but to be precise, you need to know what is inside your container. So if you are running so applications, if you are installing something there, you need to know what's that. And uh, how to do that? For example, vulnerability scanning, okay? Scanning, it's like there are some tools which are scanning your uh, containers and tells you whether you've got something which is uh, which has security holes there or not. For example, Claire is a core OS uh, applications, which is like a server, which is analyze the metadata, which is getting and fetching the metadata every single s and seconds or some period uh, from some databases and then you can send your image there and then this image is analyzed whether this has some vulnerability or not. It's a really nice thing. You can um, sign, your, uh, sign your Docker images with Docker Content Trust and also the whole idea of minimal container OS, it's great, yeah? The less stuff is inside your container, the better because the you know, small security holes is there. And of course, there, is, there are also extra things like monitoring and auditing. For example, a rancher has something like that, which is auditing all the uh, your Docker image, whether there is a no, there, whether there is a, some suspicious behavior there. Okay, uh, but what's really nice and what is really important, and from even now you can start doing that, is to change user to non-root. Okay, every single time when we are doing this stuff in the Docker file, we were root. It's bad. Okay. The second thing is uh, we can uh, run our container as a read-only, okay? So we can pass docker run minus minus read-only. If it works, it's cool. In such case, no one, even if will break somehow our application, won't, uh, ab won't be able to run anything, to in change anything in our, in our um, docker image, okay? And we can, of course, limit resources to not starve other applications run uh, in our I don't know, Kubernetes cluster or anything. So how we can change it? whole magic of adding and changing the user is here in our docker file okay so we are adding a group adding a user and then we are the whole magic is that user up so starting from user up everything on the bottom is run as a up user not as a root and it's uh, really important it's i would say even critical and it's a really bad like good practice to run our workloads, Java workloads or other workloads inside the container as non-root, okay? Um, and the Claire, I would like to talk uh, for a while about this because it's a really cool project. So it, it does the static analysis on the, uh, of the vulnerabilities in our applications, yeah? And it's, 
is getting the data and for example is every single time is checking for example whether the curl wget or all the tooling which are installed on our container has some cv and you can pass also the information where uh, those cv the database of the cv are okay and for example there is also it, but the cloud is only the server and there is also the scanner so the scanner is like a client okay so the client just can analyze for example can send um request to the cloud and send okay scan alpine 3.1 uh, 3.5 okay and then he's saying that there is no vulnerability in this alpine but for example in alpine 3.4 there are and you've got a list of uh, vulnerabilities at the very bottom, yeah? So there are, for example, four or five CV there. Yeah, so really nice tool. Okay, now, as you can understand, there is a plenty of things and bad, uh, good practices which you need to remember uh, when you're doing something with the Docker. And it it's sounds easy. It's Docker, Docker file at the very beginning was really easy, but now it's pretty complicated. But there is a solution for all of you who don't like who doesn't want to um, get all that knowledge and it's called google deep so what's google deep so it's like all the docker best practices in one place so it creates the docker image uh, from your java application but you don't need to run or write docker file at all and it's based on the distro less and distro less is uh, like alpine I wouldn't say Alpine, but this is a really small distro created by Google uh, to run uh, different workloads on that. And there is a Gradle and Maven plugin. So how it works. So the, uh, it's of course open source, you can find it. And how it works. So the truth is that the only thing to dockerize your Java application is to run something like that. Put it, uh, put it in uh, your POM or a Gradle configuration, and then set where exactly would be uh, our um, registry and where the Docker file should be sent. And that's it, the whole thing. And then when you're running the Maven, you can say Maven compile jeep build or a uh, jeep Docker build. Uh, the difference is that the build is just the builds and sends, and the uh, Docker build is just builds locally. Okay, and all that stuff which I told you like for like 30 or 40 minutes are in this Google Jeep. So it's really cool if you are doing some Java stuff. I guess that it solves most of your problems. So it's really nice. And under the hood, it does exactly the same. So it, it's layering the jars. It does the whole analysis of your dependencies, uh, putting them in the proper directories, uh, creating the Docker file for you. You don't even see this Docker file. Everything will work like a uh, charm. Really, really nice project. Uh, great uh, work done by Google. Okay, I've got some extras for you. So extras are that if you really care about the size, you can use also Java models because uh, it should speed speeds up your startup of your application but uh, not that much so you don't expect that if you are trying to start your java applications as fast as possible you will reach the huge improvements by by running it in models i at least I, i've seen two or three approaches and the, the changes was like 10 20 percent faster so i don't know if it's good result or not and then the, it tailors JRE to it needs and that's nice because you then your uh, final image docker image would be smaller okay uh, of course smaller JRE smaller smaller docker image and the Graal VM and it's it's game changer so if you've got the Java applications and if it's able to be uh, run with the Graal VM, then it speeds up the startup a lot. Yeah, so I've seen examples, and uh, it's it's really nice. It's like ten times faster sometimes. For example, the Netty server HTTP was like more than ten times faster uh, when it comes to the startup, and the same. And there is no JRE because you're doing the native stuff. So the native final file, which is which can be just sent to a Docker image, which is which there is a no JRE even, and it's going to be run there. It's really nice. 
and of course the, the, the Docker image would be small and really small. So let's sum it up, let's sum, uh, sum the, the whole and everything what I've told you today. So, uh, so if you run your app, app in container, please use Java 11 or at least this version of Java 8, okay? Uh, please unpack your fat jar. It's really, really, really nice feature and it, it will make your you know, Docker build phase uh, faster and the whole pushing everything to the registry would be much faster. And please don't run your container app as a root. It's important. It's a security problem if you do that. Um, and uh, you can still optimize your startup time uh, if you can uh, have a look at the Graal VM or Java models. And of course, if you're really lazy and don't want to and you don't need to uh, maintain your own Docker file and the distro, use this Google Jeep. It's really, really nice. Okay? And hopefully your containers would look like that and not like that. Okay? Thank you very much. Or like that.